Okay, in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you how to create your 3D coastal model for the coastal model um, assignment. Now, a couple of little rules is your model should attempt to be or aim to be 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. So you, the edge here is 30 centimeters long and we've got 30 centimeters on the side. That's quite important uh, because it obviously means uh, you're keeping the size smaller means you need less materials, and because you need less materials, it's gonna be quicker to be able to do. Now, the material you use can be anything. I'm just gonna give you an idea of materials. We can see we've got a cardboard base here, uh, and this student has used clay to build this model. In contrast, the model to the side of it, we can see that the pupil has used um, styrofoam and built it up in layers, and then Done, used various modeling techniques to build the actual feature itself. In this model, we can see most of it's cardboard with a small amount of clay being used to build up the features, which is a similar approach that this student takes, except the actual model at the back is styrofoam again. Over here, we can see the student has used plaster of Paris kind of stuff they put around your arm if you break it, across another material underneath, which we can't see what that is. And they've used tissue paper for the C effect. Okay, let's just work our way back down the models and have a little think about uh, the actual three criteria that you're gonna be judged against. So, what you wanna do is uh, read the document uh, that will be attached to this assignment um, and check what the three criteria are. And the first one is accuracy. So what we can see here is a nice accurate headland sticking out to the sea with the bay on either side. We don't see the rest of the bay, just the edges of it. We can see the cliff is collapsing, but we can also see coming off our headland, a natural arch. And actually this student has actually picked a real world example of Dur Durdle Door in Dorset. If we go to the next model, we can see actually Durdle Door again, because this student has also done this feature and we have our natural arch. We also have a little bit of information this student gives us about Durdle Door on the model. So the first idea is accuracy. Is my feature accurately portrayed? So in this case, we have a wave cut platform and a cliff. This student has gone for a cliff, which is collapsing also on this side and little caves underneath, but they've also given us a C stack. Here we can see another C stack. And in this example, we don't just have caves, but we've also got a natural arch and a C stack. Now, all of these features are coastal erosion features. So I'll talk a little bit about possible coastal deposition features. You could do a sand spit, for example, or a tombola, or a sandbar and lagoon. You can research any of these online to see what they look like and then build a model around them. So that's accuracy. Have you accurately represented a feature that somebody else could point to and say they knew what that was? The second mark is presentation. So these are obviously all extremely good examples of a high level of presentation. In this example, we can see that the student has given us a QR code, which took us to a photograph of this particular landscape. And we can see that it's St. Bees Head in Cumbria. Here we can see a card of information has been added and obviously the presentation of the model as well, especially with the C effect, is very high. So the extra details and, and uh, the grass, for example, or the trees, or if we move over here, little buildings and piers, or the lighthouse and the boat in the sea, or the wave effect, or the little fields at the top of the cliff with little sheep in them, or the power lines crossing a river, these are all examples of extra things that can be added to the presentation. Now in the final, originality and effort, well, 
that's more of a kind of a judgment that each of the students make about each other. But it's very clear from each of these examples, just extraordinary effort that went into the creation of these models. And I'm going to show you over here another couple of models that really highlight effort. So here we can see a model with incredible detail put into the cliffs and the beach with the boat being pulled up. We've got some stacks behind it. We've got a house on a road. We've even got a little sea defences. And finally, over here, we've got a natural arch. And the effect of the cliffs, they look like real rocks. So an extraordinary amount of effort went into this, and it's a very visual presentation, so it would have scored very highly. Likewise, a huge amount of effort went into the sculpting of this model. Now, the only downside of both of these models, as you'll notice compared to the other ones, is they're very large. So it took a much longer to create a much larger model. Now, there's nothing wrong, and you, you can if you go, want to go for a much larger model. It's entirely up to you. But I would recommend keeping it small, just from the amount of time it takes. And you can actually make your model smaller than even these 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter base models. And I'll just show you what that looks like by going down here and showing you a very small little model. There we are. Very small little narrow model but obviously requires a lot less material, but it's still incredibly accurate. It's a very interesting sea effect. So hopefully these ideas that you can see in these models can inspire you. Do some research online. Maybe you can do a real landscape if you wish, or you could just choose like this one here, a completely made up landscape. And there's nothing wrong with that and you won't score more or less depending on your choice. Good luck with the task.